that. Uh, Discord decided to crash. So, uh, yeah, you know, everything working as intended. But good job, and congratulations to the Bunga Palians for winning game one of the series. Uh, pretty, pretty good one so far. Uh, if you unfortunately missed the first game, don't worry about it. Uh, we have the VODs set up to where you can just look at the videos. Or, uh, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. Symphonian LCS, I believe is the channel name. Uh, subscribe there. We genu generally try to upload all of our VODs. Uh, within about a two to three day period, but uh, like I said, if you want a more direct approach, uh, you can definitely just check out on the Twitch, uh, the Twitch videos, and you'll be able to catch up on any games that you've missed. I believe up to a thirty game period, or a thirty day period. Uh, but if you know you're trying to find a VOD that's a little bit uh, older than that. Definitely check us out on YouTube, where we upload as many uh, to all the VODs available there. Uh, as we are waiting on the Spectate link, uh, I just now got it, actually. Uh, Reese is here, uh, so he'll, he'll join with us in a second. Let me just hit the ready check. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and move. Whoa, move scenes there. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. F11. All right, and the pick ban phase is underway. We have a Cho'Gath ban on the side of EEG. Pretty standard so far, you know, Cho'Gath and Nivea. Targeted bans. Uh, Definitely. Uh, the Graves ban as well. Might as well be targeted. Zillion. Hmm. I assume either HTC Fwesh or Slaughter Slasher plays that Zillion. I believe Slaughter Slasher plays that Zillion. Hey, uh, they do both play that Zillion. Aha. They, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're not going for the strategy of banning out HTC Fwesh again. Uh, which they have first pick, so they'll only be able to take three away as opposed to four. Are banning the Caitlyn? Uh, yeah, these are the exact same three bans I thought of using against EEG week one, so mm -hmm. I approve. <laughs> uh, the Cho'Gath Graves Misfortune ban... Uh, yeah, Misfortune ban uh, after game one. They dropped the Bard ban for it. Which makes sense. Ooh. Uh, Piper on Kaisa. Yeah, pretty quickly uh, taking out that bot lane. Kaisa Alistair definitely a solid, solid bot lane there. Uh, definitely. I mean, it's also because of the fact that I know, uh, I know Kaisa is a very is very much a comfort pick on uh, Piper is Isis. But speaking of comfort picks, we have Rafal on the Rumble. Mm-hmm. Sure do. And Leona as well. Yeah, that's already shaping up to be a really strong Wombo combo. Uh, Leona dashes in. Oriana ball on her. Uh, Le Leona all comes down and the Rumble all on top of it. Mm -hmm. Very aggressive so far. Leona definitely one of the better counters to Alistar. Uh, mostly because, you know, Alistar goes in, tries to get the knock up. Leona doesn't want any of that, and the Zen Shao pick up. Okay, so this is interesting. I think uh, EEG picks both their solo lanes, right? Like as soon as they can, uh, and then Bung instead of going for a counter pick, picks their jungler. So my concern is that you know EEG might be able to ban some bad matchups for the solo lanes away right here. Uh, and Bung loses out on an opportunity to put them in a very tight spot for prioritizing those solo lanes so early. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you leave both of the solo lanes open so they can only really... If they if EEG did want to, they could only affect one champion pool um, 
you know, extremely hard with a, a two band pick on say a mid mm. lane or a top lane. But it looks like they're going towards they're they're stemming towards this mid lane. Um, this mid lane counter with a Galio ban. Uh, Galio, pretty good champion against the Oriana. Gonna say no, we don't we don't want any of that. And the uh, Karma, Karma ban. Yeah, I'm assuming that's a support ban. Uh, no, I I think that's a champion that that uh, Bungaloo plays from time to time. We see a Nar pickup. Nar, pretty good into the Rumble because he can you know sit back, kite back, and you know just mm. play the play the laning phase relatively uh, relatively safe, and then be that presence that you know kind of the same thing that the Malphite does, where it's like. You know, he's you're definitely gonna recognize his power in the mid to late. Okay, so I see what the EG is doing here. It's the same, mostly the same comp that they pulled out uh, in the first game of week one against uh, Thoughtly Crew. Uh, the Ashleyona hard CC bot lane, Piper's 100% taking cleanse. Uh, you know, so it's good for him. Uh, yeah. Rumble, Oriana, Leona, Ash, just huge amounts of CC for that Rumble and Jax to play around in. Yeah, but and... then at the same time, you have the brand pickup. So definitely trying to counteract that Jax and Leona engage. They're definitely going to have to think about going in. Uh, as I change the scene here. Uh, they're definitely going to have to think about going in before uh, or more so than with the Oriana because Brand just brings a lot of team fight to the table that isn't a skill shot. So, you know, in reality it's gonna be it's gonna be even easier to land, you know, a four to five man ultimate, especially if they play that skirmishing uh, that's that skirmishing team. Definitely gonna have to watch out for it in the jungle where, you know, Teams stay clumped up a lot more uh, as I give the ready check here. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Brand really likes those skirmishes because he can just stay in the jungle and provide a massive amount of AoE damage. Did I disconnect from Discord again? Oh no, okay. you're here. You're here. I'm, I'm just I'm, trying to. I'm save. paranoid now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, now I'm just trying to think. Uh, so what exactly do these teams want? You know, Bung's got a more tanky approach with Alistair and Nar, uh, but I don't know if they have the. I mean, I, I guess the brand gives really good follow up to like a uh, Alistair and Nar engage. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I feel like the Nar or. Uh, the brand would too easily get caught out by this Leona or Ash uh, being so low mobility and not as big of a range as like a Zareth, for example. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I uh, I agree, but you also have to think about the fact that it's an Alistar Zinchao and a Nar, uh, presumably also a Mega Nar that's going to be in the mix of these fights. Um, mm. EEG half to they have to put a lot of focus onto this front line um, because Zen Chao and Nar by their own right deal some pretty good damage Nar being the bruiser that he is probably going to build a black lever frozen mallet Zen Chao is going to go a little bit on the more damage side and then you just have the front line Alistar just taking or just tanking um, a phenomenal amount of damage even inside of the equalizer or being inside of a uh, of an Oriana shockwave, he's going to be tanking a lot of a lot of damage, uh, and it kind of puts pressure on EEG in my opinion. You know, the Oriana may have to think, oh well, maybe we have to use it defensively in case they engage on us. So it kind of puts the trigger on HTC Fuesh's hand uh, to see what he does. So I think I kind of understand. Uh, where this uh, this team comp is going because at the very back you have Kaisa who in all reality shouldn't be taking any pressure from this Jax from this Oriana from this Ash uh, other than their ultimates 
is not going to be, you know, they're, they're not going to pressure him that much. Jax has the one leap in, and if they want to try and 1v1 a Kai'Sa, then that's totally on them, but, you know, if I'm Alistar, I'm, I'm also kind of just looking back. And then Bran just being able to press R in a team fight and deal a, an, an amazing amount of damage, like, that that's his only job. So you kind of have to burst the Bran down before any of that even happens. So it, it's, it's a very much an in-and-out fight and recognizing when to use that Orianna Shockwave or that Rumble Equalizer. Um... But we'll just have to see, because EEG definitely has the advantage, in my opinion, but Bungaluya has a lot of pressure, and if they get ahead early, uh, slash early to mid, they're, they're more than likely will run away with this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, a lot is going to come down to this Alistair pick, if that's... Like, I think that's so important for keeping the Jax off of carries and Leona from uh, using her Zenith Blade to get into a fight. Uh, is this Alistair which can just use this headbutt and say, nope, no, Jax, you used your one leap, you don't get to come back in this fight. Uh, so, yeah, I think as long as you can avoid this Ash, uh, the Ash Arrow, engaging from a long distance... Uh, everything will be all right. We don't. We still see heal on uh, Kaisa. Yeah, it looks like they're going in with heal. So no cleanse. Definitely a big regret from uh, playing against this comp was <laughs> not bringing cleanse. So I expect to see a QSS after Stormraiser. Nasher's Tooth or Rage Blade or whatever. Kaisa happens to build first. Yeah. So let's uh let's go to the chat for a little bit. Who do you guys think will win this game? Uh give us a comment on what you guys think of these preliminary team comps. Um in in your opinion, what is uh let's do it this way. Uh Reese, in in your opinion, what is EEG's win condition? What are their keys to victory in your eyes? Um if Jax or Rumble do very well early game, uh, I think that's that's gonna be tremendous. Because the selling point of Oriana, Ash, and Leon are not their damage so much as the sort of utility and CC they can bring. Like Ash can feed her ass off all lane. She can be 0 and 8 by 10 minutes. Doesn't matter. She still has her ultimate. Yeah, you know, it's still like a three second stun if you hit it from far enough. Uh, so if Jax can bring the damage and if they can coordinate a good rumble all, that's all they need. Okay. Uh, and that's what's really terrifying about this Ashley on the bot lane is between them they have so much uh, engage and lock up on the right kind of care, uh, the right kind of champions. Like if they hit Kaisa's and Jower Brand. It's over. Right, I do understand. Um, now, uh, conversely, uh, I guess I'll answer for uh, Menbung, or for the Bungapalians. <laughs> uh, I think their key to victory is understanding the in and out. Um, understanding that with the objectives such as dragons, such as barons, they have to really, really think about what they're doing. Uh, should they be there? Do they have the vision control? Um, you know, because honestly speaking, this team comp that they have picked up is definitely, uh, it, it has a little bit of semblance of a team fight, but I think it really excels at a pick comp. Xin Chao, very good at that. Kaisa in the late game can burst almost anybody down on the side of EEG. Hands down. Alistar, great engage potential on a single target. Doesn't have to look for those multi-man knockups. And then, you know, Bran bringing the damage that he does with the uh, with the full rotation of spells, not even having to drop the ultimate. Um, and then Nar, if he gets the uh, if he gets the frozen mallet, can be a really really big engage tool as well for those single targets. So I think what the Bungapalians have to really do is focus on vision control in the jungles and in those high objective areas to make sure they do not get cut off by the equalizer, by the shockwave. If those two ultimates land at the exact same time, or even it comes into an extended team fight and they land anyway, um, I think the Bungapalians can't win in a 5v5 format, so they have to find 
they have to find picks and they're only going to do that with vision control so we're going to have to definitely see that mm. but in any case uh, let us know in the chat with a hashtag EEG win or a hashtag bung win uh, Reese overall who do you think takes this game uh hmm I'm gonna give it. Uh, I'll give it to EG. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think, I think EEG have this as well. Uh, the ultimate that Oriana and Rumble uh, bring to the table again. Just, it, it outputs a lot of damage. I mean, we saw what the Oriana could do last game in the hands of uh, Bungaluya. And now you're going to throw a Rumble Ultimate on top of that. Um, you know, Rumble can definitely put out the damage for sure. So I think I also am going to give it to EEG for this time around. I'm predicting a 1-1 one, one, uh, tie to this little mm. engagement here. All right. Uh, just a little shameless little plug. If you are interested in donating to our prize pool, you are more than welcome to. I believe that is on the bottom of the stream. Uh, any little bit counts. Uh, just to let you guys know, for any of you new watchers, uh, we are Symphonian LCS. We are part of FIMU Alpha. And any, uh, I believe it's 50% of any donations automatically go to our SEF, Unable to Download Spectator da Data. Let's go. All right, let me just. Uh... Yikes. Oh, oh yeah, I got the same. Got the same bug. Uh, nice. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Freedom penguin. I'm gonna spectate your game. Uh, all right, I think, I think we're good. Uh, it goes fifty percent goes to our SEF, which is our Symphonian Education Fund. Uh, it's a charity uh, that we run to advance music in America and especially to the younger children. I believe. Uh, what we mostly do is for uh, band programs, uh, we help them out with maybe any instruments, music stands, anything music related that we can think of, uh, the SEF fund definitely takes care. So if you are interested in donating to that prize pool, uh, you know, any little bit counts and we do appreciate that as we're going to hop into this game here. And I'm, I'm just now getting back into the spectating, so... I'll be a little bit behind when you yeah, load in. That's fine. It's still early in the game, so it doesn't take forever to load up. Mm. And as we see here, five points on both sides. Not really looking to engage. Both teams don't really have the greatest engage comp. E.g. maybe slightly ahead with the Leona. Yeah, Leona's willing to flash. She's got great engage at yeah. <laughs> level one. But it doesn't look like that will be the case. And we're just going to have a standard start as we had last game. Uh, so because of the spectator bug, we didn't really pay attention to any of the keystones. However, everything looks to be pretty normal. Hmm. Both sides. Yeah, yeah everything, it's, it's about normal. Phase Rush being on the Xin Shao. Yeah, I think maybe Nar could have gone for some more aggressive, like a uh, Presley attack or whatever Nars take. Yeah, I, I think he just wants to survive the po like that. <laughs> uh, it gives him a little bit of uh, sustain in the lane along with that Doran's blade, so he's be he'll be able to stay in the lane a lot longer. Uh, than actually trying to dual refall. I don't think that's going to be in his best interest. As StarCraft taking a little bit of damage here off of Freedom Penguin's poke. Nothing too substantial. He is Alistar. We'll end up starting to heal that once he does get his passive going. Other than that, pretty simple start. We have a ping right now. Uh, onto the dragon as Maya is going to take the top scuttler 
No one's really made a move from the bottom as well as the fall is putting in a lot of damage. On to Bungaluya. However, it takes a little trade for his troubles. Gonna have to see this. Uh, but otherwise, pretty, pretty even all across the board. Very tamed as opposed to the last 10 minutes of that last game where we were fighting almost, what, every other minute? <laughs> I'm still loading in, so. It felt like, it felt like that. Oh, you're still yeah. loading in? Yikes. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll keep you posted on that <laughs> right all, now. I'll just lose it 60%. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, he's Maya, actually, in the top side, going to get a gank off on Rafal. Rafal flashes. I don't think he's going to get out of this. The boomerang lands and first blood going over to Maya. As we see in the bot side, Starcraft and Slaga Slasha engaging on the opposing AD carries. Uh, does look like Starcraft has the passive up, cannot auto attack, and has to take a lot of damage from Freedom Penguin. As Slaga Slasha actually flashes forward, gets the ignite and the Zenith Blade combo. Starcraft is very low. Freedom Penguin going to go ahead and finish that off. Really, really good play there on the side of Slaga Slasha, understanding the amount of damage, the amount of early damage that Freedom Penguin can put out, and the fact that it's just a slow, you know, it's a free, uh, <laughs> it's a free frozen mallet uh, that Ash has attached to her passive, and understanding that he does have the damage, had the ignite and everything else up, really, really good recognition there by Slaga Slasha. So I'm loading into the game, but it's buggy and not uh, moving time yet. Uh, I'm like stuck at 30 seconds. Uh, okay. I sure love League of Legends. <laughs> well, in my in-game time is 432, 433, 444. Yeah, like I, I can't even move past 30 seconds. Like the game's not. It's just not. Uh, how about this? Get uh, get out and then spectate uh, Freedom Penguin's game. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll get a uh, on the unable to download spectator data. Game will now exit. Okay, it's seeing me to the door. Ah. Great. <laughs> All right, well, just just keep trying, keep trying your best, man. Small indie company. Yeah, small small ind indie company that has no resources whatsoever. Please, no Flame Marino in the chat. But uh, after after all of that, with the kill in the top lane on Rafal, with Maya getting uh, ooh, with Maya getting that kill, and then on the bottom side, uh, about a two hundred gold lead on the side of EEG, nothing really much to speak of. A couple of minions, probably the eleven CS that Rafal has over Bungaluya at the moment. Oh, huh, uh, right, pimp. Pimp Monkey and Bungaluya traded lanes. Bungaluya was the top, hmm. or was the mid laner the last, the last, uh... Ah. Yeah, that's game. Yeah, huh. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, Bungaluya is in the top lane as Nar. Again, we didn't realize because we're used <laughs> to having locked roles. <laughs> uh, so, we're, we'll try to get better about that. But, yeah, the mid laner of uh, the Bungapalians is now top lane. As Rafal going to go aggressive here, burning the equalizer onto Bungaluya. Bungaluya, however, is underneath the tower at this point. Not the worst case scenario for him. Took took a bit of damage, however. We'll be able to heal it back up with that fleet footwork. Very aggressive there by Rafal. I don't really know why he decided to do that. As Bungaluya does have teleport to get back into the lane, about to become Meganar though. Be interesting to see. Uh, kind of have to expect why Maya hasn't come back top lane for the regank on Rafal. Rafal not having the flash up, burning it in that last little engage. Now doesn't even have the ultimate. I, I think Bungaluya should be a little bit more vocal about that in understanding. Uh, what was burned and uh, what kind of power they have, especially because he has his ultimate available at the moment. And that window is closing pretty fast. 
Uh, Pit Monkey gonna go ahead and clear a pink ward here on the bot side. Dragon actually not going to now. Eventually does. Oops, I muted myself. I'm back in the game. I'm spectating. Uh, cool. Seven thirty nine, uh, seven forty. Yep, yep. I'm I'm up to date. Uh, uh cool. so yeah, what I was thinking, uh, my is not heading top to punish this rumble. Uh, he was stopping by bot. I think he was trying to blow. Uh, yeah, it looks like the. Ash and Leona's summoners are also down. They were pushed pretty far up. Ash being an immobile AD carry and Leona not being able to offer much in Peel uh, was probably looking to... Well, those flashes are not recently burned. Those flashes uh, are actually just about to come back up. They they were burned in the initial uh, kill of StarCraft early on in the game. Hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, he might have been wanting to get something from that while they were still down, oh, if they are gotcha, tracking gotcha. those summoners. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, meanwhile, Rafal's is... Pretty uh, this is tough for me. Yeah. yeah it's, it's so, up. yeah, maybe just prioritizing the bot lane on this one. And I, I do think, yeah, if, you, if your choice is to get Kai'Sa or Narfed in the early game, you, you're probably leaning towards Kai'Sa, but yeah, hate to ooh, cut something's looking to happen in this red buff. Yeah, red buff is being contested here by three members of EEG. Maya will go down, Equalizer going down for Rafal, as well as the ultimate from Orianna, the Shockwave being burned as well. Really good stuff there, catching Maya on the rotation up to his red buff. Uh, you kind of have to think, was there a missing ping uh, from his solo laners uh, telling him that there were multiple people missing? Yeah, that was uh, that was rough. They were really ready to you know, blow a lot for that multiple ultimates. Uh, and I, I mean, it paid off for a kill, uh, which went to Jax, I believe. And yeah, that is one of their big win conditions is getting uh, gold onto Jax. If he can finish that Trinity Force... Uh, you know, he really starts rolling and turns into this offensive brick that doesn't die and does an incredible amount of damage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Violet Sociocat, I know you're in the chat. Uh, Bunga Palians won at game one, uh, for those of you asking. I didn't update the scores because I'm new to this. Don't really know how to in the middle of the game. Don't have dual screens like uh, like a bunch of you guys with money. So, uh, you know, we're just making it work. So, yeah, Bungo Palians take game one. As Maya actually going to find out Flesh here. Flesh doesn't have any mana to speak of. Burns the heal. Might have to burn the flash. Does. Yeah, burn the flash. Yeah, I don't think he needs to. Yeah, very to. coincidental that he just happened to catch uh, Flesh trying to recall in that bush. I, I don't think Flesh needed to burn that Flash? Uh, yeah, I think it was safe, but Maya did have his Flash up, so... Uh, uh, if you'd... Oh, as Freedom Penguin gonna ult Maya, Maya being caught in the middle, but StarCraft hitting a nice Pulverize onto uh, Slaga Slasher there. Sir Everett is now in the mix. Good Flash there by StarCraft. Flash being burned by Sir Everett as well. Rafal is here, burning the Equalizer, burning Piper. Oh my god. Maya is here... Too little, too late. Pit Monkey is in the back for some reason. He's going to get spotted out by the Pink Ward. Is going to be engaged upon. I don't really foresee him getting out of this. Burns the ultimate. Not much else. And it looks like this Infernal Drake is also going to go down to EEG. So if you're keeping track, that was a triple kill for uh, Rafal on Rumble. Another one of the win conditions. Making sure he can do a massive amount of damage with that ultimate. Uh, uh, just related there on that choke point. Uh, flash there burned by Rafal as the Zenith Blade max range gonna hit Bungaluya. Bungaluya gonna flash out of that situation as well. Uh, Bungaluya just being a little bit too late on that teleport call was also in Mininar, so didn't really offer much uh, in presence of a team fight. As it looks like both Piper's Isis and StarCraft are here in the bottom lane trying to make something happen. Rafal is still here. They have no vision of him. Freedom Penguin is getting very low. Burns the heal. The Ignite is going to take him down. StarCraft going to take that kill. Maya is back down here as well, trying to see what he can make happen. StarCraft is lurking around, getting that headbutt pulverized combo. Slaga Slasha going down. Rafal taking a little bit of damage there. Really, really good turnaround there by the Bungapalians. 
So I, I believe you were saying something earlier about this game being slower than last game, so this is your time to retract that. Yeah, definitely. One hundred percent. I think I think they just uh, they probably had a little chat uh, before the game saying, Hey, you know, ten minutes after every single game, just go ham. Uh, that, that's, that's enough farming. That's enough of a warm up. We're just gonna start going. Uh, exactly. But really good pickup there by the Bungapalians, taking down the bot lane of uh, of EEG. Maya now two and two. Uh, gonna get that warrior enchantment going. Let me think about this blue buff. But other than that, not a lot of rotations happening from the side of EEG. Actually, I say that here, as Slash Slash is going to get caught, well, not caught out, but he's going to get sp uh, scouted out by Piper's Isis. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, with Bali just having room mid, it looks like they are, you know, trying to put a lot of pressure. I think this mid tower... Oh, Piper's Isis is going to get stunned by the ultimate Freedom Penguin, going to go down as well. The bullying now starting on the side of Bunga Palians. And unfortunately, Freedom Penguin is the target. Not having the heal, not having the flash up, will not be able to get out of that scenario. Yeah, so... I'm, I'm wondering where this first turret uh, is going to come from, because there's a good amount of damage onto both mid turrets. Uh, and they were prioritizing uh, you know, both bot lanes, sending someone up there a moment ago before catching Ash in bot lane. Uh, now, we see here that Sir Everett is going to take Maya's red buff. Uh, looks to turn around. Rafal is on the backside. Does have Equalizer up if needed, but is not. Bungaluya late to the rotation yet again. Uh, well, Sir Everett is trying to look for something. Bungaluya does not have flash up. Gets into Meganar, pushes him back. The Equalizer very well placed by Rafal. Not going to be able to get out of there. Oof. Five and one and two. Four so, uh, on this uh, on this rumble pick. Kind of so have to be scared. So Kaisa finishing the rage blade first. I'm interested to see how long it's gonna take for her to get a uh, quicksilver sash, because I mean while. While it's Rumble who's the real threat on the enemy team at this oh, point. Oh, Zenith Blade gonna catch on to Piper's Isis, mm. as well as the ultimate Freedom Penguin will live. Yeah, and, and that's why you're gonna want a Quicksilver Sash uh, yeah. against the Leona Ash, because they can just do that. Yeah, or uh, maybe even try and entice your Alistar to go for Mikhail's. But kind of. Yeah, kind I of mean, not impossible. Yeah, or maybe even going for an early locket as well. An early locket would help them out tremendously, especially with the damage coming off of Flesh, as well as maybe even trying to live a little bit from Sir Everett, who is now 2-0 and and about 15 CS above his lane opponent, about to get that Trinity Force finished. Can't have too much left on it, as, uh, you know, Flesh being a little rude. <laughs> Oh, the Equalizer being set. Uh, will not catch Bungaluya. Bungaluya just going to go ahead and jump out of that scenario there. As Rafal looking for the pick here. Maye not going to be able to do much. Leandries has set in, and that does give a little bit of tankiness. So as far as poke is concerned, Rafal isn't too unhappy. Not any damage he may take. Yes, Sir Everett actually finds Piper Isis here in the jungle. Flash being burned. Sir Everett gets the pick onto Piper as Isis. Maie is trying to get something for his return, but doesn't. Two ultimates missing from the bottom lane. Oof. Uh, a little bit more here. They're trying to pressure down this mid lane turret. Nah, looks like they're going to back off, though. Uh, they're pressuring around here. They're trying to find a pick on Pimp Monkey. Uh, but besides the Zenith Blade, not a lot of long uh, of 
well, besides the Zenith Blade and probably the the best form of long distance engage from the Ash Arrow, um, kind of a l- l- little bit lacking on the CC engage. As Freedom Penguin going to get caught out by Maya, will go down to Pimp Monkey. Sir Everett's is also going to get caught here. Slaga Slasha is in the middle trying to make something happen. Equalizer is huge! There's going to get four members. The Shockwave going down as well, but Bungaluya taking down both. That's nuts. Yeah, the combo there from Bungaluya getting the last two members onto that wall was insane. Pimp Monkey, again, a lot of AoE damage coming off from him. Not really ha- not really much to do there. And the Shockwave Equalizer was in sync almost perfectly. I say almost because the Shockwave actually pulled them away from the Equalizer just a little bit. Had it been mm. right on top of it, that that fight would have gone completely different. Oh, we see Slaga Slasha trying to get onto Pimp Monkey, trying to make something happen. Sir Everett is in the middle again, but just goes down, doesn't have the help from his team. Rafal is there as well. Bungaluya with the wallop, not going to get anybody. Fwesh with the command uh, the command move, taking out about a third of Piper Ias's, uh health bar. But Rift Herald going over to, uh, going over to Bunga Palians. Uh, Reese, I don't know about you, but it looks like the Bunga Palians are are back. Well, they're they're equal now, and we thought it was going to be pretty hard with Rafal being on five and one. Yeah. Yeah, and I think. I mean, I'll be honest. Like, <laughs> I'm having some bugs with this spectator, which is really annoying. Uh, uh, pretty constantly. <laughs> yeah, pretty constantly freezes up. Uh. Yeah, and and just the time doesn't progress, and I have to speed oh, it up to catch back up to uh, you. you but to, uh, you have to find me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, I understand. Well, uh, whenever you get that that fixed, uh, let me know because uh, I need you, man. No, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm keeping I'm up. Like I keep uh, speeding up the thing after it freezes, so I catch up to the current time. Oh, you but, keep desyncing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, not a problem, man. But, just, uh, just whenever you, whenever you got something to say, just say it. Yes, uh, Kaisa foregoing the Quicksilver Sash. I guess just not all that concerned about the uh, CC from Ash and Leona. Oh, Starcraft gonna get the uh, headbutt pulverize combo onto Sir Everett. Sir Everett's gonna Counter Strike away. Bungaluya is there with the wall of Piper Ice is ulting in, trying to get the kill. Will actually get the cleanup onto uh, onto Sir Everett's there. Really good stuff, and I mean EEG not really doing anything right now. I mean you have the Ash bot lane, but not really applying pressure anywhere else. HTC Flesh is in the mid lane, but is going to get caught by Piper Ice. Is a huge shockwave, but Piper Ice doesn't care, putting out so much damage. Oh, unfortunately, the snipe hitting a minion, the minion block coming in clutch for HTC Flesh. I don't think he gets out of this, situa- this situation. Yeah, ends up trying to execute, but not enough time. Piper Ias is going to go ahead and get that kill. Yeah, so I think... I, I mean, I think the teams are just getting a little uncoordinated with the rotations. You know, getting caught out like... Uh, Flesh just did mid lane. Shouldn't happen. Because, uh, I mean, he'd just seen uh, Piper is Isis in top lane. Uh, had to know someone had to be coming down for him and push that far up. Uh-huh. Ultimately, it comes down from lack of vision. I mean, he was literally at the tier 2 the tier two tower before he realized, hey, I don't really have vision of their jungle for me to be pressed up this far and Piper just uh, literally walked into the lane and dealt so much damage uh HCC Flesh not really had well has the Ludens completed but as we just saw Piper doesn't really care about that damage if it's not followed up by anything else and was able to just you know put that damage right back to him 
Hmm. Oh, Maya is in the bag, going to catch out Freedom Penguin. However, Sir Everts is in there with the Counter Strike. Over, uh, wow, Shockwave going to hit Pimp Monkey and Bungaluya. Not really much else with the follow up. Sir Everts goes down there in the middle, along with Saga Slasha. Flesh going to get the kill onto Maya. The Rift Herald has been summoned. Pimp Monkey with a full rotation going to take Rafal very low. Rafal going to pop the Zanya's ultimate, uh, Zanya's Hourglass right there. Uh, Rift Herald will charge in. Pimp Monkey taking really low. Wallop hitting on mm. to, t to Flesh. Wow. Bungaluya almost hitting that boomerang onto Freedom Penguin. Freedom Penguin still has Flash available, so can stay relatively safe, but is very low. If he gets caught out with one or two spells, could go down very easily, as it looks like the Bungapalians are just going to go ahead and take this middle inhibitor. Yeah, that uh, that was a really valuable uh, Rift Herald summon, because they got two mid towers and the inhibitor. Uh, and that's just in time for them to go set up for Dragon and probably recall before it comes up. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I can't really see these fights, and that's very annoying. Uh, I can tell they keep coming in the favor of Bung, <laughs> and that's really big. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, right now, we're looking at a 37 to uh, 40k... Uh, gold lead on the side of Bunga Palin is about three, but as you said, it seems like these team fights are going more towards the favor of Bunga Palians. Um, what do you think, Reese? Should EEG try to adjust? Uh, actually, I'm gonna have to cut you off right here as Maye is gonna get a 1v1 onto HCC Flash. Slash Slash are trying to make something happen, but is not able to. StarCraft is in the middle, very tanky. Gonna just pulverize out of there as Bungaluya and Pimp Monkey are coming in from the blue side. Uh, Ultimate was burned on Slash Slash for the disengage. We'll fall with a huge equalizer going towards the center of the team. Maya goes down first as well as StarCraft. Sir Everts is in the mix. Counter Strike is huge. Piper Iasis is gonna heal and is gonna, well, almost trade. And uh, Bungaluya is the last member alive, and he has to repopulate society all by himself. <laughs> so, uh, as, as, as to what you were asking uh, just before that uh, fight broke out, I mean, I think it would help if they'd stop getting caught. Like, you know, even as uh, as you were asking the question, Flesh was caught out one more time by Maye. Mm. Uh, and I think if he had been around for that fight, uh, it would have been a clear victory for EEG. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, so, in, in your opinion, they need to stop getting caught out. Um, and I think you're absolutely correct. And again, that just comes off of the vision control. I mean, look at the uh, look at the vision scores here on the side of. Uh, well, actually, they're they're pretty equal. Yeah, they're pretty even. They're, they're pretty even, uh, but the thing is, is that because Bungapalians have this pressure, they're able to get those deep wards down to where they're still relatively safe, to whereas EEG, in my opinion, are almost going in blind. They think that they have a pick, but then two or three more members show up, and the, the fight turns in a completely different direction. I think the way they come back through this match is, is vision control. They have to get vision down into their own jungle to understand what is safe and what isn't and catch these rotations by uh, men, uh, Bunga Palians because they're doing really good and they're on the Baron right now. As we see here, all five members of the Bunga Palians are trying to get this Baron down. Sir Everts is trying to find a way in. We'll catch an entire rotation from Pimp Monkey. We'll go down. Slaga Slasha in the middle trying to make something happen. Equalizer is doing a lot of damage actually but Bungaluya is in the front line disrupting their uh the back line of EEG Flesh is the last carry alive will eventually go down no actually survives the damage coming out from the Bungapalians uh four members of Bungapalians up right now to the two of EEG Baron with the Bungapalians Looks like it's going to be a victory here, a 2-0, as uh, Rafal tries to make something happen, but the damage is there, and EEG fall 0-2 to Bungapalians. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, just like that. Uh, yeah, I went back and kind of watched that fight uh, at the end there over again, and it seemed like the Oriana ults, they once again sort of pulled people off of the equalizer. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if that was you know a deciding factor in how that fight went, but there's something to... So something that caught my attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. It it just never seemed as if EEG had all five members available for any team fight. Um. And and you were calling a lot to that as well. Uh. Saying you know, uh, Freedom Penguin on the Ash wasn't able to stay alive long enough. Uh. For the damage to be felt by the Bungopalians, and I think you're absolutely right. Uh, again, I have to call back towards the vision control. I think, um, as far as vision is control is is controlled and concerned, uh, the Bungopalians had it hands down. They had the deep wards to be able to catch rotations and understand and have a little bit of a semblance of where uh, EEG were, to where EEG was just blind. They were absolutely blind as to where the Bungapalians were, where they were rotating, and, you know, a pick turned into a skirmish very, very quickly uh, because of that. Uh, so, I mean, still, really good really good team fights from both HCC Flesh. Well, now he's just Flesh, but um, very good uh, ultimates from Flesh and from Rafal trying to keep the team alive in those team fights, but ultimately just falling short. Uh, wait, did we do an MVP poll for last game? Uh, I don't think we did. I'm looking back through the chat. I don't think there was an MVP poll. Well then, uh, so we're going to do a series MVP. So let me just get ahead and get the straw poll. <laughs> so. uh, but me me and uh, Joe both agreed it was... I think it was Bungaloo, yeah. That was on Oriana. Uh, I th uh, Actually, I think a lot of the people that were there thought Sal was the game MVP. So maybe we just give it to Sal. Uh, stream. What do you think? Should we just should we just give it to uh, Bungaluya for game one? Is that cool with anybody, or does anybody like have a pressing matter uh, that they have to speak as to why Sal didn't deserve that MVP? Uh, I'm gonna butcher this name, but I really don't care. Uh, I'm, I'm just uh, pumpkiny. Uh, no, bum. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I misspelled the crap out of that. Really don't care. <laughs> uh, my yay. P M P N K Y. No, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it is PMPMNKY. PMPMNKY, right? Yep. <sighs> okay. Uh, Pim Pim, Nikki, Pumpkin, Who's their AD carry? Man of many names. Their AD carry was Piper. I'm just going to write Piper. He knows I love him. And then <laughs> Starcraft, Starcraft on support. Gonna go ahead and create the poll. Tile is required. Uh, game two. MVP. Create the poll. Okay. And the poll is posted. I'm going to post that a couple times. So, we're going to go ahead. We're going to give this about three minutes at uh, 35 after the hour. We'll go ahead and close it. Um, but just some closing uh, thoughts uh, for me anyway was these games were very much, uh, they were very tight. Um, you know, the Bungapalians in game two kind of cleaned up their act a little bit and uh, they really just 
snowballed out of control from, I believe it was that dragon fight. Uh, it was from there that they were thoroughly in the driver's seat and they never really gave control back over to EEG. Um, so really good stuff mm -hmm. there. EEG had a lot of life in both of these games. Honestly speaking, I think they should have taken game one uh, because of the <laughs> early to mid that they had. Uh, but still really good stuff there. Um, I definitely expect for them in the next team practices uh, to kind of play a cleaner mid game, a mid to late. Because if they had cleaned up that mid to late game in game one, I have no doubt that whatever happened game two, like the way that it snowballed, would have happened with them. It was just a couple of little mistakes here and there that ended up adding to a bigger problem that they couldn't solve. Uh, what do you think, Reese? Uh... I agree, because I didn't get to watch a lot of that game, <laughs> just because of the bug I had. But, uh, yeah, I think I, th I think EEG has some good ideas for getting early uh, snowballing going. Some of the coordinated invades on Maye were really, uh, really painful to watch for Maye, uh, and, you know, got some early kills on Rafal, but... Uh, I don't know. Somehow it didn't translate into, you know, mid game or late game pressure. Uh, you know, the e the equalizers were coming down really well, uh, but I, I I don't know what it was honestly. Yeah, it, it seemed like they just didn't have the kind of team fights that they needed. I agree. Well, in any case, uh, we'll give it about another minute here. Get your votes in. We only have about six votes in the uh, in the MVP poll. Make sure you get those in. And uh, so, uh, Sal uh, Bungaluya is your game one MVP. I think no one really has anything to say about that. Uh, so, Sal, if you could please go to the player of the game interview, or I guess what do we have nowadays? Yeah, player of the game. Uh, captains as well, if you would like to join in Maya and Rafal, uh, please go to the play of the game. Sal went to bed. That's about right. Grant, get your <laughs> ass in here. Coach of the squad. Never mind. Stop playing with my heart. Wh whoever. either Sal, If Sal is here, Sal get into the player of the game. If Sal is not here, Grant, get into the player of the game. Otherwise, we're going to call it right here, and your Game 2 MVP is, in fact, Pimp Monkey on the brand for Game 2. Congratulations, Pimp Monkey. If you can also join us in the Player of the Game interview, that'd be great. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and switch on over right now. hey -o. The Oriole that was heard across the PMA LCS. That could have been like a 2-0 for their teams. Yeah, so <laughs> we're here with, fight, really. with the team on. captains, Rafal and Maye, and two MVPs, Pimp Monkey and Allergic to Milk, or Bangalovia. Congrats, guys. Congrats on the uh, Bungapalians. Uh, on grabbing that 2-0 victory. Uh, so my first question is, uh, what was your game plan coming into this week? Uh, we saw uh, we saw EEG come out with a lot of fire in the uh, in the in the first week of the PMLs. Yes. So what was the conversation like coming into this game uh, here tonight? Con conversation in regards to what, like our our draft or like. Uh, I was I was speaking directly to Maya. I don't know if I made that. Oh, right. you said EEG. Oh, sorry, you I think meant me. Yeah, no, EEG. EEG had a really good showing week one. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Now. All right, so, well, we were looking at what gave them those wins, which was, um, <coughs> well, Sir Everett's popped off both of those games, and that was a big portion of that. Which, um, banning those champions, we didn't really think was we're going to do much it's mostly just you know we don't think he was successful because of the champion but we did what we did notice is um that your mid laner um Quesh, we looked at his match history and was like all right he can only play he's only been <laughs> playing four champions so 
we'll just ban three and first pick the other. <laughs> yeah, we kind and of expected that. Yeah, so that's what we did. And so that was to minimize one of their players, um, where we think if we banned other um, other people, it wouldn't have been as effective. But we kind of totally forgot about your ADC's Caitlyn, because um, we were not listening to our coach. <laughs> put it in our, our Google sheet, but we just did not look at it at all. So he yep. was a bit upset, but it was, it's all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. For uh, those for those so, who don't know, uh, Grant, uh, Alistar Moody, aka Slago Slasha, aka the man nope, who holds my heart Slaga. is uh, or it is just Slaga, yeah. The man <laughs> who holds my heart, uh, you know, internally is uh, the captain of uh, the Bunga Palians. So, uh, Rafal, what are what are your thoughts on on the games that would happen tonight? Um, so game one, <coughs> um. Kind of, I, I put a lot of that on myself for kind of fumbling through draft there and not really listening to my players as much as I, sh- as I should have, because I, I was really intent on the, um, because like we, like we, we knew that if we got red side, they were gonna three ban, flash and pick and pick one of his champions. We, we were expecting that, mm-hmm. so we first picked the Caitlyn because we knew we had that power pick, and I wanted us to pick Jarvin Rumble because that would be a strong pick together, as Maya knows. Mm -hmm. Um, But I kind of messed up, I probably messed up the order of the draft and the picks because we picked the Jarvan, which then was awkward because we were like, oh wait, if they ban the Jace, which is like our fifth mid pick, then it's gonna be like (laughs) real bad. So we gotta pick the Jace. But then because of that, um, we, they got they banned the rumble which i was which we were like well now we have no ap <laughs> so i went on the vladimir which like i did i did pretty well in lane but i did really bad in team fights and i couldn't transition any lead and i had into like later into the game mm-hmm. um and i think that if maybe we had drafted a different like 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 F- flesh like obviously did not have as was not as comfortable as he would have been on his, like the other champs that he is better at, mm-hmm. but nonetheless, I think he was doing fine for what like the situation he was put in. Mm-hmm. And Freedom Penguin was absolutely gigantic. Mm-hmm. I think that part uh, a big issue is just that I made Sir Everett's play a champ that he wasn't comfortable on, and a lot of that is on me. I think if we, I think if he was on a champ like a Vire or the Jax or a Nocturne, where he could comfortably hop onto the um, the Misfortune or the Oriana that would have gone much better. So, I think that a lot of that was our, uh, was just our draft. Mm-hmm. And then game game two, like, we were doing well, and then we kind of, I mean, we, there was, like, one team fight by Dragon where we just got, like, wiped. Like, I just, like, I was sun for, like, four seconds, and I was like, alright. Like, I see how it is. Yeah. Um, and that that just kind of <laughs> We, we didn't really know how to play once we were put in that kind of situation. Mm. Um, and we kept forcing fights and going for picks even though we were behind. So, like, we knew we had, like, we, we, we weren't playing to the strengths of our team comp very well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one was more of a team issue. But game one, I definitely put a lot of the blame just on me drafting poorly. Gotcha. Mm. But, yeah, that's, like, a, my general thoughts on gotcha. uh, it went. Speaking of that game one draft, I've got a question uh, for Maye or for whoever was working your draft. Uh, so, uh, your strategy game one was to ban out Flesh, uh, and you did force him onto that chase. It looks like uh, with your second round bans, you know you wanted to get rid of Rumble not only because it's a comfort pick for Rafal, but also an AP top laner. I'm curious about that Brom ban. Because if you banned Vladimir uh, or uh, another AP top laner of all likes, Swain, uh, you could have forced him, you know, potentially to play an AD top laner, making sure they had all physical damage, uh, which would have been amazing with your Malphite and Ramus picks. Damn, Swain so, would have been good. Shit. Yeah, that's what, I was yeah. <laughs> I was, well, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, well, we could ban the Swain or Vladimir. Then I was surprised you didn't pick the Swain, actually, because. I would have. Damn. I did just press on the draft, didn't I? Um, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, there's, there's three options there. And 
I guess just taking just taking the best yeah. one because and the yeah, Rafal is the best on Rumble and yeah, Rom sure. is really uh he's really good at Brom. Rom is just really good into our team also. Mm -hmm. I think we had what like yeah, yeah misfortune. Uh, Oriana that could well I think the ball gets stopped by. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shield, so. yeah. The the yeah, yeah, really good move. Um, move. Um, so so speaking more to uh, to Sal and uh, and Kevin Pimp Monkey and uh, Allergic to Milk, aka Bungaluya, you guys actually pulled off a lane swap, which uh, we didn't actually figure oh. out until maybe three minutes into game two. Um, <laughs> you know, how did how did you guys feel about that, or or how did you guys come up to that? Uh, decision to uh, to hit that lane swap up was it was it the fact that there were certain champions that were being banned out or were you guys completely planning on to just switch it up game two uh, what were you guys thinking whenever it came to that lane swap I can hit on that yeah um, we we just have different champ pools and I think just whatever the games call for will be is kind of the determining factor on what we want to play um we did the exact same thing last week it was kind of more forced last week with cell not actually playing mm -hmm. um last week mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um but like i played top the first game last week and then i switched to mid um yeah I, we just have different champ pools and whatever the situations call for is really what however we'll uh decide who plays where Okay. Okay. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Um, so now with uh, with this with this week done, uh, what I just have a couple more questions. Uh, so for for my A, uh, you guys came out swinging. You got the two O on EEG. Arguably one of the hardest competitors in this league. Uh, you know they came out swinging really really well in week one. Uh, how do you guys ride this momentum or, you know, what's, what's going to be going down in this next week, uh, prepping for the next game? Like, what are you guys thinking? What do you guys think you guys should improve on, uh, you know, looking forward? That's, that's a question. Um, well, prove on our way. Sure. I need to, I need to end less. Yeah. Also. <laughs> game one, especially, I just ran into you guys and died a lot. And even game two, I think I had the most deaths, so. I should work on inting less, and then, yeah, there's also times where we were just, we were taking fights that we really should not have taken, and, um, that was mostly on me, for, I was, Dustin was like, yo, you probably shouldn't take that fight, and I'm like, right, and I still engaged. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I gotcha. So I need to do less of that, um, there's definitely a lot of things we need to improve on, because those were not clean games by any means mm -hmm. for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, the only reason why we were able to bring that game two was around was that one dragon fight. Yeah. Be forced, but so we'll look for that. Um, maybe I don't know, making more cohesive team comps as well, because um, especially with the ability to change your top and our mid and maybe yeah. some other things too that we've got under the cover. But yeah, gotcha. Um, um so for uh, for Rafal, uh, you guys dropped down 0-2 this week. Uh, honestly, I don't think anybody on the caster desk really thought that that would happen. I honestly thought it was going to go 1-1, to be completely honest with you. I knew this was going to be a really good match to watch. I, I just didn't think you guys would fall 2-0. Um, so what what do you guys think uh, you need to do in order to prepare yourself for next week so that way you don't get 2-0'd uh, again? What are some things that you need to clean up uh, just initially because I know you guys still have to digest this game? Um, I think... Honestly, I think just the big thing we need to do is play more because I, while I was researching my ace team, I saw that they had like played like three or four games just in the last like day or two, and we like we have we our team hadn't <laughs> played since last week's match, which is uh, you know might have been a bit of a factor in our you know communication probably. Um, so I think just like better preparation. Um, I I've just been really busy myself, and a lot of the preparation today was a little bit last minute. Um, I, I think that if we're just we just come in a little bit more ready uh, mm -hmm. and with better clear communication next week, I think we should have no issue. Mm -hmm. I know I, I'm pretty sure we after this week, no matter how this week goes, we can't be lower than third in the group. So we can still end up in first. So I still feel pretty confident about our chances of getting a pretty high seed going into playoffs. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we just have to, you know, put a little bit more effort in because we all just kind of like slacked a little bit this last week. But uh, I, gotcha. I mean, we we all saw how we did well we did last week. I know it's po- I know it's possible. We just have to, you know, get back to it. For sure, for sure. Uh, other than that, Reese, do you have any other questions? Um. So I noticed a few times, uh, especially in game two, there was one time that stood out. Uh, Rafal, you there was like some really organized aggression onto Maye. I remember one time you caught him at his red buff. Uh, I was yeah, really bad. yeah, three of you uh, just went right on him. Uh, was that something you had planned going into this game? Was uh, disrupting his jungle pathing? Um, not necessarily. I mean, we knew that he's one. We kind of like last week with theatrics. We knew he's one of the bigger carries on the team, and I don't necessarily know like what's going through like Sir Everett's brain and like when it, his during his entire like jungle pathing. But, um, I I think I think our team just has very strong communication during laning, and we're very good at reacting to each other. Um, which is like I mean I'm pretty sure, pretty much every lane won pretty much every game. It just kind of fell apart as the game went on, and we were you know, asked to make split second decision. So I think it was it wasn't necessarily that we were just like targeting Maya. It was just like like we saw him on award, it's like, oh let's get him. You know? Like uh-huh. we, we have a lot of very crisp communication early game. Um it just kind of you know devolves fell apart eventually yeah, over time. Uh but that's the thing that can I'm sure we can work on and improve a lot by next week. Mm-hmm. Uh question from Maya. Any thoughts on Menbun? <laughs> I mean it's only reason why we won this game, honestly, he was watching. <laughs> and, you know, we have a hundred percent win rate when Sean is watching. All right, win rate <laughs> All right. so I'll, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and yeah. cut it off here before Sean. Hold on, hold on. Before you cut off, oh. I have a question. Oh no! Super Bowl, let's go Browns! Woo! Yeah, Browns world champions. Yeah. Wait, so did they, uh, did they win? Yeah. So for those who don't know, the Browns won today. Yo! Uh, for let's the first go. time since. Two seasons ago, I think. Uh, yeah. Like the beginning of two seasons ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some some crazy statistic like that. Um, so, with that, I think we're gonna go ahead and cut off the stream. Um, again, congratulations on the Bunga Palians for their two zero victory. Uh, other than that, uh, I've been Uncle Jemima, joined by Euromoose, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.